Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Williams and today I am here to talk to you all a little bit about acute infectious diseases. You may ask, what is an acute infectious disease? An acute infectious disease is a disease, uh, it is a disease that spreads rapidly and lasts for a short period of time. It has distinct symptoms that can be identified as a certain type of illness. There are three ways that, that identify types of spread of diseases. The first way is an endemic. This means that the disease is found among a certain group of people or in a certain area. An example of an endemic is young children in the U.S. contracting chickenpox. The second type of way that the spread of disease can be identified is an epidemic. An epidemic is when a disease spreads rapidly over a short period of time. An example of an epidemic is influenza or a group of people with influenza. The last type of spread of disease is a pandemic. This, this is a global outbreak of a disease that is found in different countries, such as the UK, the USA, Europe, Asia, etc. An example of a pandemic is HIV and AIDS. There are five periods of an acute infectious disease. The first period is the incubation period. The second period is the prodromal period. The third period is the period of illness, also known as the acute stage. And the fourth period is the decline, is the period of decline. And the fifth period is the period of convalescence. As you can see over here to my left, the red line represents the number of pathogen particles, and the blue line represents the severity of symptoms of diseases. As you can see, the red line and the blue line, they both start off at zero, but the red line continuously increases and then comes right back down to decrease and ends in the period of convalescence. As you can see, the blue line, like I said earlier, starts off at zero. It comes down to crest and it stops at the prodromal period. Then it goes up and continues to increase, then crests again right in the middle of the period of illness. Then it starts to decline all the way down to the period of convalescence. Both of these lines both show the periods of disease and how they increase and decrease over time. Now I'm going to talk to you about the periods of acute diseases and a little bit more in detail. The first um, period is the incubation period. This is known as the silent stage. This stage is where it shows no types of signs or symptoms in patients. The second period is the prodromal period. This is where the signs first start to come on and symptoms and patients tend to get itchy nose, runny nose, scratchy throat, fever, all types of symptoms that you can think of if you're about to catch a cold. This period usually lasts about one or two days. The third period is the period of illness. This is the most severe period because this period is where you are officially sick. No matter what you try to do to get rid of those symptoms in the, in the prodromal period, for some way those symptoms did not go away or help and you are officially sick and you are currently in the period of illness. The next period, which is the fourth period, is the period of decline. This is where symptoms start to subside. The infection is still present, though, but your health starts to get a little bit back to normal. You start feeling a little bit more like yourself, but the infection is still inside of you, so you're not completely healthy or you're not completely have beat the cold. The final and fifth period is the period of convalescence. In this period, symptoms are completely vanished and they're gone. You have beat the cold and the patient starts to regain their strength back. In this period, you start to feel better and you start to continue to do things that you would normally do on a daily basis. Just remember that in this period, you must take care of yourself so that you don't go back to the period of illness. Next, there are five 
of the deadliest infectious diseases. The first and top deadliest infectious disease is Ebola. Ebola is known in Africa mainly, but they did have a scare a couple of years ago about people that came to the United States that had Ebola or from different countries that had Ebola. The second type of deadliest infectious disease is tuberculosis. The third deadliest type of infectious disease is HIV and AIDS. The fourth infectious, deadliest infectious disease is influenza. And the last and final deadliest of the infectious diseases are MRSA. As you can see, I have both tuberculosis and influenza highlighted or bolded as you can say. And these are bolded because in the next slide, I will explain to you the characteristics of these two and explain why these two are the most deadliest infectious diseases. The characteristics of tuberculosis and influenza. Tuberculosis is a disease that primarily affects the lungs. It can be spread through airborne. So you can catch this on an airplane, in a classroom, in a hallway, anywhere that someone has this, you have a possibility of catching it. And just know that tuberculosis is highly contagious. I feel like a lot of people do not know much about tuberculosis or pretty much think that it's not that big of a um, disease, but it really is because a lot of people don't know that it's in the air and you can get it. The next type of deadliest disease that I chose is influenza. Influenza is so, so, so important. It is one of the most deadliest diseases. A lot of people think that having influenza is not one of the deadliest diseases, but if it's not taken care properly, it can definitely be one of the most deadliest diseases that you will ever have. Influenza is when someone has the the, the, is, is when someone has the flu and the droplets are carried throughout the air through infections, through coughs, sneezes, whenever someone talks to you. And it can definitely affect the respiratory system, such as the nose, throat, and lungs. I definitely understand why they tell everyone to cough in their arm instead of in their hand because um, germs are more likely to spread easily if you sneeze in your hand. The last and okay, so finally, these are my references that I chose in order to do my um, presentation. Finally, I want to thank everyone for their time, and I really enjoyed doing this project, and I hope you all enjoyed enjoyed and learned a lot about acute acute infectious diseases. Thank you and have a great day.